The invention of the bow and arrow has often been considered to be a marker of higher level cognitive function resulting from complex behavior of anatomically modern humans. Examining the archaeological record, it can be difficult to see when humans first made this technological innovation. This is largely due to the nature of bow and arrow technology, made with perishable materials like wood. However, archaeologists may have uncovered evidence from Sabudu Cave in South Africa, which shows the earliest use of this technology could have occurred around 64,000 years ago, during the African Middle Stone Age, which is much earlier than previously thought by archaeologists. Small quartz artifacts, called backed tools or microliths, are the critical piece of evidence used to argue for the development of the bow and arrow during the Middle Stone Age. Another crucial artifact for this hypothesis is a preserved bone projectile tip from the same archaeological context, which seems to show use as an arrowhead. In this video, I replicate one of these quartz microliths from Sabudu Cave and talk about the research into archery during the African Middle Stone Age. I begin with flint napping a quartz crystal, trying to produce blades to serve as blanks for my reproduction. Blades are a specialized type of flake, which are at least twice as long as they are wide, have parallel edges, and have one or more ridges down the dorsal face. The first flakes I remove follow the natural ridges of the quartz crystal, and the ridge left by the previous blade removals becomes targeted for subsequent blade removals. Quartz microliths can be found in Sabudu Cave in an archaeological component known as Howison's Port. Howison's Port is one of several technological innovations which date to the African Middle Stone Age. Sabudu Cave itself is a large rock shelter site located along the Tongati River in South Africa. The site contains pre-Still Bay, Still Bay, and Howison's Port assemblages, which are all critical to our understanding to the development of anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Bat tools and microliths are blade flakes which have one or more edges retouched and shaped to maximize the functionality of the unmodified cutting edge. Besides crystal quartz and vein quartz, igneous rocks such as dolerite and hornfells were flintknapped at Sabudu to make tools. The focus of flintknapping activities within the Howison's port component is blade production. These blades are not very long, which is especially true for the quartz blades, which are smaller than those of other materials due to the size of the quartz pieces. Whole blades were retouched, usually along one edge, to form holes in the shapes that incorporate the naturally sharp edge of the blade. There are a variety of tool shapes, but the common pattern for Howison's port back pieces is a curved or triangular back and a relatively straight cutting edge that was left sharp. Excellent preservation at Sabudu Cave has allowed for the preservation of micro-residues on microlith tools. Micro-residues are tiny bits of organic matter that have remained trapped on a tool, usually in some sort of tiny crack or corner. This allows detailed functional and hafting interpretations. Resin deposits were found in the majority of these tools, mostly clustered at one end of the tool. This would indicate that they were hafted using a glue made from tree resin. Ochre traces were on most of the tools with resin and indicate that it was likely an ingredient in this resin glue. Researchers studying these tools noticed all but one had animal residues, and these included fat, tissue, blood, bone, and collagen from animals. These tools have been examined with use trace analysis as well. This analysis looked at striations, edge damage, and the orientation of hafting residues on the tools themselves. The patterns of these traits were compared with data from experimental data sets. What the archaeologists found is that over half of the quartz microliths examined most closely fit wear patterns from transversely hafted arrowheads. With transverse arrowheads, the point of the tool isn't worked to have a piercing tip. Instead, the penetrating end of a transverse point is a wide, thin edge of a flake, 
while seemingly counterintuitive, experimental studies have shown that these points are very effective arrowheads. A smaller percentage of these tools appear to have been hafted diagonally, as side blades along the arrow shaft. In addition, based on the small size of these, which is 13 millimeters on average, it is more plausible that they were hafted to something small like an arrow shaft than something like a hand-delivered weapon, such as a spear. If a microlith or an arrowhead is too large, it weighs down the arrow and makes it ineffective. Likewise, tiny points in microliths mounted on something heavy and large like a spear are less effective than a large point or large side blades hafted on the same hunting implement. As such, there is a correlation between the mass of a projectile tip and the weapon system it was used with. The argument for bone arrow technology in the Howison's port complex isn't just based on quartz bat tools. A bone point was found in Sabudu Cave associated with the Howison's port component and dated to 61,000 years ago. The point itself has a cylindrical cross section and is a nearly 50 millimeters long. It was recovered in two pieces within a fire hearth feature and later refitted by archaeologists. As it was discarded by Middle Stone Age peoples into a hearth, the artifact was charred by the heat. Interestingly, it is morphologically similar to bone arrowheads used by San hunter-gatherers in the 20th century of South Africa, despite the two technologies being separated by tens of thousands of years. When compared to experimentally made and shot bone points, the damage and use wear of the original bone projectile point are consistent with functioning as an arrowhead shot from a bow. There is no reason to think that because Middle Stone Age people used bone arrow technology, they abandoned hand-delivered spear technology. Dalry and Hornfell's back pieces are larger than their quartz counterparts, and may have been hafted on spears instead. Ethnographic studies of hunter-gatherers supports the use of archery and spear technology being used concurrently. Regardless of the technology used, archaeologists know what animals they hunted due to the well-preserved Howison's port faunal assemblages at Sabudu Cave. The focus of hunting was on small ungulates and bovids, although they hunted animals as small as rodents and as large as giraffes. The most common prey species included gambrine giant rat, bush pig, and blue diker. Blue diker alone accounts for a third of the faunal bone assemblage. The potential use of the bone arrow at Sabudu Cave during the African Middle Stone Age could rewrite how archaeologists think of this technology. Previous evidence suggested that this wasn't invented in this region until around 40,000 years ago, or until the European Late Paleolithic era. The invention of the bone arrow by early modern humans during the African Middle Stone Age may show that their cognitive abilities were even more developed than previously thought. Likely, the archaeological development of the bone arrow is complex, and it may have been invented and abandoned several times throughout prehistory. Research into this topic is still ongoing as archaeologists working at these sites continue to search for more evidence of Middle Stone Age archery.